There is a new comet up in the nighttime sky. You can't see it with the eyes, but you can see it with a small telescope. But how do you find it? Well, come along with Nina. Nina has a new plug-in called Orbitals. And with Orbitals, you can find comets, asteroids, and the planets. Hi, I'm Pat Prokop. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. Now, the telescope I used last night to photograph the comet was the Orion Eon 130mm uh, F7 telescope. It has a focal length of 910 millimeters, just about perfect for seeing comets. And indeed, it was seeing the comet. Now, the camera I used was a monochrome camera, and I used just the IR UV cut filter uh, to get the most uh, um, maximum amount of light I can get in uh, with this uh, system. And the comet is relatively faint, the tail, but the, the head of the comet is relatively bright, telescopically speaking. And I was tracking the comet throughout the nighttime hours. Let's take a look. So here I am in Stellarium, and the comet right now is located uh, high up in the southeastern sky, south-southeastern sky, medium high, uh, about an hour and a half after sunset. And looking at some of the features in Stellarium, we can turn on the constellation markers. And there you see it, it, it located in Ophiuchus. And um, uh, there's uh, uh, Scorpius right over here, and Terrace, uh, the bright red star, Sagittarius over here, and the uh, Cygnus of Swan, and the Milky Way over here. Anyway, uh, the Milky Way right in here, rather. Uh, anyway, there is the location of the comet right now, and according to uh, Stellarium, uh, it has a magnitude of about 7.14. Remember, it needs to be at least below 5 to see it with the naked eye, and that's under ideal conditions out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, I suppose. But probably you, know, you won't see anything until it's below 4 or even 3 if you're in the suburban areas. So it's not visible to the naked eye, and it's not going to get much brighter than this, maybe up to like 6.8 or so. Uh, anyway, the distance right now from Earth is about 271,000 or 271 million kilometers away. That's about 169 million miles away. And it'll reach its closest approach to Earth around uh, July 13th, 14th. And it won't be that much closer, still about 168 million miles away. And it won't pass the uh, perihelion or its closest approach to the sun until around December 19th. And it's still going to be way far away from the sun at that time, too, at about 168 million miles away. So it's not going to get anywhere near the sun. So there's no chance of this comet burning up. Now, it came out of the Oort cloud, which is, you know, at the outer edge of our solar system. And, uh, you know, it, it, that's about a month light year away or monthly, a month, a month light, a month light away. <laughs> and, uh, uh, it's been traveling for about 3 million years on its way to pass Earth and go around the sun. And it's on a what's called a parabolic orbit. So chances are uh, once it flings around the sun, it'll be flung back out in space, never to be seen once again. Anyway, here's your chance to see the comet uh, up in the summer sky after sunset. Uh, and it's going to be high in the sky. So, you know, everybody should be able to see it, at least in the northern hemisphere. So let's go to Nina and find out how I use Nina to find Comet 2017-K2. So I'm in Nina right now, and let's go to Orbitals. Well, the first thing you need to do is go into Plugins, if you haven't already done this, and load in the Orbitals. You'll, you'll see the availabilities, since I already have it in. Um, it'll be right over here, uh, but I have it already. So uh, installed. Go ahead and install it, and you can see up here uh, you'll need to install, and it'll ask you to uh, restart Nina once you install it for the first time. And it gives you the instructions right here, but I'm going to give it to you real quick and dirty. Uh, so you just go into the Imaging tab, and up here you have your orbitals. You can click on that, and that clicks it on and off. Uh, there I have it on, and it... it I have it in my image pane right now, so uh, in this tab right here, rather. And uh, 
what you want to do, let's say we want to chase the comet that's available right now, 2017 K2, uh, that Panstar comet that's coming into view right now. Well, well first of all, you, you certainly want to update your uh, comet uh, directories here. You don't need to do that for the planets. The planets are, they're, they're already loaded into uh, Nina. Uh, and I, I, was, I was on the planet and there, the moon is behind the trees already in my area. Uh, well, in the planets, you can, you can, you know, check your planets, different planets and so forth. Saturn is going to be coming up very shortly. Um, let's see, just load that in. Uh, it, but it doesn't clear my trees. I mean, it's rising right now, but it doesn't clear my tree until what? Uh, 324 in the morning. So, yeah, let's go to the comets and um, over here. Um, comet 20. 17. You see all the choices coming up uh, for your different comets and K, and it's going to be K2, so you can just go here and uh, load. There it is. So that right there is my big holly tree, and it has just cleared the holly tree. So uh, from here, now you got some decisions to make. If you want to track the comet and the stars to be blurry, uh, click on set tracking uh, rate and set guider shift rate for the tracking of the comet. But if you want to track the stars um, and say take some 30 second subs or even two minute subs, uh, you're not going to see too much motion of the comet uh, and, and it'll be rather clean. So just, I'm just going to leave these alone right now and I'm just going to go into the framing. And uh, it, it will load the frame that you are, are going to be seeing. Now you're not going to see the comet in the frame itself. Uh, because you know this is a you know a, a background image, uh, not a current image uh, of the star charts, and that's that's what we're going to use for or Nina is going to use for plate solving. So let's go and, and do that. Slew and center uh, or plate solve. There it is, plate solving. And while it's doing that, I'm going to go into the image tab and go out of uh, orbitals into the image itself, and I'm going to bring it over here. And I'm using the um, um, monochrome camera right now, and I'm going to, I have it on the luminance filter. So we should get a nice bright uh, picture here. Let's see if we go, <laughs> look at that. It got it on the first try. Of course, I've already had the telescope kind of like aligned. So um, <laughs> first shot right there, there's the comet. There, it works. There you have it. That's how you do it in, 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 in NINA now. You can track the planets, the comets, the asteroids, even the James Webb Space Telescope. So uh, load NINA and have fun with it. I'm going to track this comet over the next couple hours, see what happens. I'll show it at the end of this video. While I was shooting with the Orion Eon, I also had this uh, smaller telescope, the Orion ED80 set up. It has a much wider field of view. Now the Eon over there, uh, has a uh, focal length of uh, 910 millimeters, uh, resulting in a f ratio of seven, f7. This is a little 80 millimeter telescope uh, with a focal length of 400 with the uh, ex uh, reducer on it. I have a 0.8 reducer on it. So that gives me a, uh, a focal ratio of 4.8, a much wider field of view. And I also had the color camera uh, on this system here and let's take a look at some of those images. All right, I'm in Photoshop right now, and this is the final processed image. This was only a six minute image from the ED80 uh, telescope, uh, the little um, uh, 80 millimeter telescope with a focal ratio of 4.8. And there you can see the comet right there in, in a wide field of view. And you can also see some satellite trails passing by uh, during the uh, exposure time. I don't know if those are Starlinks or what, but they were passing through. Uh, anyway, uh, that's what it looks like with the uh, wide field of view. But looking at um, Deep Sky Stacker, when you go into uh, stacking into uh, Deep Sky Stacker, you want to click on this um, edit in the comet mode. And you click on that and you select the comet and you just click on that to select a comet for each individual frame. So now if you want to make a movie out of the images you took, you can do this indirectly through Deep Sky Stacker. And what you do is you go into the comet mode, which is by selecting this little device over here, and then you select each frame, each of your fit files, each frame, you select where that comet is centered. 
uh, you need to do that for the comment mode. And then over in the uh, settings, uh, what you want to do the first time in the stacking, uh, go into the comment and just do a standard stacking. Uh, you, know, you, can, you can later do a comet stacking and then try the stars and comet stacking. Now, if you're going to do any of the, the comet stacking or stars and comet stacking, particularly the stars and comet stacking, you might only want to use oh, less than 12 frames. Uh, if you use more than that, um, sometimes even more than 10, uh, you're going to get some weird looking results. So you, you can't use a whole bunch of frames when you do this. All right. Um, now, what that does, it will register each file for these stars. It, it's not going to really care about the uh, comet. The comet's going to move, and that's what you want if you're going to make a movie file. So, what you do is you go into here, and then when you go into uh, register your pictures, um, do not stack after registering. Just unclick that. So, but you want to register these pictures, and then when they're done. Uh, you can go into your files and then take all those registered pictures and put them in another file. Uh, I did this. Let's see if I can pull it over here. Um, over here, astronomy, 2022, uh, July, right over here. I took all those TIFF files that it made from uh, registering the files. And I put it over here in a file called Comet Registered. So these are all the TIFF files. And then uh, I put this into my, my uh, movie editor. In, in this case, I used um, uh, DaVinci Resolve. And I made a movie out of that. And I'm going to show you that at the end. Uh, but that's how you do it. Um, okay. So the next thing you do is you take the final product and what I did is I went into uh, PixInsight, I played around with it and so forth and then shipped it over into Photoshop and in Photoshop uh, ended up with, uh, let's see this was the image here, yeah um, the final image of the comet itself right there, oops I got this on the negative, I'm going to go positive and, and there's the final output right there so you know, this is the comet that I was able to find via Nina in the orbitals. So this is how you do it, and this is the final result. So uh, hopefully you know, you'll enjoy these uh, pictures at the end of the, um, of the video. The comet should be visible throughout the month of July and August into September and October. However, it's going to be uh, the closest to the Earth right around July 14th, I think, 13th and 14th. Uh, but it's still going to be way far away, about 169 million miles away. So try your luck with Comet 2017 K2. So if you want to find the comets or the asteroids or the planets, you can use Nina with this new plugin. It works fantastic. And remember, the heavens are filled with majestic wonders, all in a sky near you. And unless you need rain, we can use a little bit right now to cool things off. Heat index out here is about 110. I am sweating. Anyway, uh, unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. And happy comet hunting. <laughs>